Good morning, Inspire Church North Cascade. It's looking like we'll be meeting together again soon. I'm not sure when that will be. I'm not sure how soon that's going to happen, but it is looking like it's getting closer. Um, because of that, I would like our worship team to come this Wednesday night and and begin practicing and begin getting sets ready for Sunday. And we're also going to record you. So um, if we can't meet Sunday, we can at least use those worship sets for our live on Sunday morning. Uh, one of the problems we have is, is even though the president has asked us to churches to begin meeting again, we still have to follow our state and local authorities. And so I know the county is petitioning that we can begin meeting. And I know our Northwest Ministry Network is giving us guidance. And so the very soonest we can get in this building, we will um, understand that we will have some CDC recommendations to follow in terms of how we seat and how we handle sanitizing and how we handle social distancing while we worship together. And we will figure all that out and communicate that with you. Um, but it's an exciting time. It's, it's going to be really exciting to get back together and be able to worship together again. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I've missed us being together. Um, looking at this camera just is not the same as us being in the same room where we can talk and where we can um, just be close with each other. So I'm really looking forward to that, as I know many of you are. I, I do want you to know that even as we do start getting back together, some people probably are not going to feel safe, and maybe some people shouldn't be together yet because of uh, previous health conditions. But we will still be live streaming to Facebook and to YouTube um, to provide for those that can't come together with us when we first start meeting again. And so understand that we are thinking of you and we're trying to take in all of the possibilities of how we can make this work together and we're trying to get that ready to go. Um, please pray for us as we plan that we can do this well and do this safely and do this in a way that would honor the Lord. This morning, um, before we go to my wife leading us in some worship, I want to take a moment and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can gather together. Even though we're not together in person, we are very much together in spirit, and we're together with you, Lord. And so I pray that you will take our time as we worship and as we, as we look into your word, and you will just come down and touch us and bless us and encourage us, and God, make us stronger. And we thank you for what you're going to do in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you In Jesus' the name above every other name In Jesus the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and I will build my upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me are you hurting and broken within overwhelmed by the weight of your sin jesus is calling have you come to the end of yourself do you thirst for a drink from the well jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come to them to the reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, what 
what a Savior Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Bow down before Him For He is Lord of all Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Oh what a Savior Isn't He wonderful Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Bow down before Him For He is Lord of all Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ Lord, we just thank you for what you are to us, that we've had this opportunity to worship you. And Lord, we're, we're separate places, but we're worshiping the same God in the same place. And that draws us closer together, not just closer to you, but closer to each other. And Lord, we just praise your holy name and, and we exalt you and we honor you. And we thank you that even though this time we've had to be separate, you've provided the means that we can be together. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, and our households, how you're looking out for us. And, and Lord, I just lift up each family in, in our body of believers right now. I know that some are struggling financially because they've not been able to work. And, and Lord, I pray that you will meet their needs and you will open the doors and you will provide for them. I know some, Lord, are, are working with children and, and homeschooling, and they never planned on being homeschool teachers. But God, I pray that you will be with them and, and help their kids to still learn during this time. And Lord, I pray that you will reach down and, and touch every one of our body, that you will draw us to you in this time. And Lord, it's so easy to get caught up in the politics and the all these theories of what's going on. But Lord, the thing that we can set our eyes on is that you're still our God. And we pray during this time that Christians are shown to be strong and that our God is shown to be all powerful. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to be doing in this country, because I believe many souls are coming to you right now. And Lord, I, as we try to gather back together soon, I pray, Lord, you'll help us do this in a way that honors you in a way that brings glory to you, and, and Lord, in a way that just lets the world know that, that we have been changed by, by our relationship with you. Now, God, bless our time together here. Bless as we go into the Word in just a moment, and we thank you for what you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, I'm really excited about all that is, is going to be going on soon, and and the one thing I prayed about that I really did mean is that as we figure out how to come back together, we don't want to do it in a rebellious way. We don't want to do it in a, in a way that glorifies us. We want to do it in a way that glorifies God. And so we're going to work very hard to do that because we want God to be exalted. As, as the world sees how Christians behave, we want the world to see something different. We want them to see change people. And so please pray for us as we, as we try to plan on how to do that. Right now, we're going to be taking the offering. And where we won't be passing a bucket, we will be taking a moment to pray over the offering and encouraging you to give. And knowing that we have several ways that we can actually give by texting, we can give online, we can mail to Inspire Church at 805 Township, Cedar Woolley, 98284. And I'm going to put these options on the screen in just a moment while I pray. And so you're, you can write those down if you need to. 
and and see exactly what um, the ways are to get this done. I've noticed that the giving has been up a little bit this month, and I just encourage you, we still incur expenses, even though we're not in the building. We still pay utilities there, and we still pay to get the yard mowed and all the stuff that we have to do to take care of the place. And so I would encourage you to, to continue to be givers. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for taking care of us, for giving us the means that, that we can give back to you. And, and Lord, we honor you. And we love you and we trust you, Lord. That's why we give, because we trust you, because we know you're going to take care of us. Now, God bless the gift and the giver, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. morning. This morning we're going to talk about storms. I know we talked about storms last week, but we're going to talk about storms this week because kind of through right now we're going through a big storm in our country and how we deal with storms is going to be very critical to when we start sharing about Jesus, how people see us respond to problems is probably one of the greatest means we have in introducing them to the Lord. And so this morning we're going to be preaching a message that's entitled Storms, How to Deal with the Storms of Life, Part 2, Surviving the Storm. And, you know, we all have storms, but surviving the storm is a very, very important point here. And so we all want to get through to life. Um, everyone deals with storms or rough seasons in this life. Uh, trials in all of our lives, just like storms in our ecosystem, bring about uh, life and renewal. Um, when you think of flooding, and we live in a, I, I live in the Skagit Valley down here um, where the Skagit River floods, and we, there's a certain point of us that is concerned about flooding, but at the same time, when the river floods, it brings nutrients to the farm soil and actually makes the soil better. And so that's how storms are in our life. They bring this, this rain and they bring this turmoil, but they should actually bring positive things through us. And, and sometimes that depends on how we respond to the storm. So today we're going to look at um, really what we do in the midst of storms and how we get through them. The big idea for, for this week is, is truly we're going to talk about what it takes to not only survive during a storm, but actually to thrive in the storm, to, to come out of the storm stronger than we went in. And that's the thing if I could get you to think about during the whole message was, how do I get through this and be stronger for it? Not just barely survive and not just end up, when you think of a, a, someone that gets tossed out of a boat and gets washed up on shore, that he's laying there just almost drowned. I want to get, get washed toward the shore and come walking out of the water stronger than I was when I went in. And that's the goal that we have today. And so I want to read a passage of scripture, 1 Peter 5.10 from the NIV. It says, and the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Now, I like part of that verse. I like the part about him restoring us and making us strong, firm, and steadfast. I, I don't particularly like the part after you've suffered for a little while. I, 
I think sometimes like when, when I pray to God, I, I want him to get there before I have to suffer. But I think we have to understand that sometimes suffering is, is part of the process that helps us become strong. In Mark 35 through 41, and we're going to read several more passages, is a passage about Jesus calming the storm. And when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake of the Sea of Galilee. And they left the crowd behind them, and they, they took him along in a boat. And there were other boats traveling with him. And in the midst of traveling across the, the lake, a furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat, and it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the, the stern of the boat, sitting, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. And I think this is a, as, as we go through more scripture, I think we'll talk about this process of the disciples fully understanding who Jesus was. And I think this is one of those pieces where they began to understand that he represented a lot more than they ever imagined that he was. And so there's some interesting facts about the Sea of Galilee and the fishing boat and the storm found in this passage. The Sea of Galilee is about 13 miles long and eight miles wide. It has a, a maximum depth of about 141 feet. It's not a huge piece of water, but it's a big enough piece of water for someone to make a, a fishing to fish in and to make it live a lot, make a livelihood with. A normal boat trip should have taken about two hours um, to go from one side to the other. And, and typically these boats were about 25 feet long, about seven feet wide. They normally would have, have multiple places where people rowed this boat. Um, normally you had four people rowing and you had room for other people to be sitting and they had a little sailing mast if the wind was going the right direction. So um, the wind would blow one way and they could take the wind across the lake one way and then they have to row back across the other way. Um, one of the interesting things is that it was very common for storms to rise on the Sea of Galilee and they tend to come down from Mount Hermon and come rolling across the sea um, with great violence. The Greek word seismos is the word used for storm in Matthew 8, describing this incredible storm. This is also the word we get seismic from, which we mean when we think about earthquakes. And so when it talked about this violent shaking of the water, and it wasn't just the wind was blowing, it's the water was shaking so violently, they felt like they were going to be totally overtaken by it. Um, one of the other points is that at least four of the disciples were established and skilled fishermen, Andrew, Peter, James, and John. And they were used to rough waters on the Sea of Galilee. It's highly likely that they were in this boat and the storm was so bad that even they were afraid. I, am, I don't like storms on water. I like water when it's very smooth and flat, or I like to be in very, very big ships on water. And so I can totally understand, but it always scares me when the guys that are used to it and they get scared, that's a bad sign. So let's, let's talk about three steps to, survive, to surviving the storm. Number one, believe that God cares for you. I think that's the core belief we have to have. When things start to go bad around us, it's, I've heard people say this a lot. Well, God must, God must hate me. God must not like me. God must be mad at me. I want you to understand something. God loves you and he cares for you. And if there's a storm going on around your life, it's not because God is angry at you. And it's not because he doesn't like you. It's because this storm somehow is going to make you stronger and make you better and make you draw you closer to him. And those are all things we pray. We say, Lord, Lord make us more like you. Get us closer to you. But sometimes it's storms that do that for us. And we're going to look at the scripture, Mark 4, 37 and 38. And it says, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Then the disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And so here's the funny thing is all of a sudden they've lost trust that Jesus loves them and cares for them and that he was going to let them drown. And I want you to understand it could be 
that they were trying to make it on their own and hadn't really put their trust in Jesus yet. And I think a lot of people want Jesus to save them in the future, but they still want to live their life on their own. And we actually have to start really now putting our trust in Jesus and trusting him to take care of us. Um, in John 3.16, and this is a passage that probably most of us know by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I want you to understand that the God that loved you enough to send his son to die on the cross for you isn't going to be a God that's going to abandon you in a storm. Isn't going to be a God that doesn't like you. God loves you. And he loved you so much he gave his son for you. And I think we need to hang on to that thought once in a while when things start going not so well. And, and remember that God loves us. And it's almost like we need to have this blinder on, like horses have the blinder. It needs to say, remember, God loves you no matter what's going on around you. So we have a couple of things we can do to help us with this. A is stand strong in our faith. We need to stand strong in our faith. Last week, we talked about foundations. It's in the stormy moments when you stand upon your foundations. See, that's why we build that's why we build foundations, is so we have something to hang on to, something to be strong on when things start going rough around us. Ephesians 6.10 says this, Finally, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. So when, when things start, when the storm starts coming again to, against us, we stand strong in the Lord. And then we go to B. Don't second guess God. And I hear a lot of this. I, I get phone calls. People are second guessing God, telling me what God thinks. I'm thinking, God doesn't think that. Um, God's plans for you didn't change because you're in a rough season. And I'm going to say this to you. This might, might mess you up a little bit. But God's plans didn't change even if you sinned, even if you made a mistake. Even if you did something that was really wrong, God's plans, his love for you didn't change. Because here's the thing that I know is that I got saved back when I was in fifth grade. And God told me, Rick, I love you. And I responded back to him, God, I love you. And at that moment, God knew what I was going to do. He knew every sin I was going to commit from that day forward. God knew every struggle I was going to have. God knew everything I was going to face. And he doesn't quit loving us when we stumble and fall. He doesn't quit loving us when we doubt him. This storm did not surprise Jesus. Jesus knew the storm was coming. He knew the outcome of the storm. And so let's look at Isaiah 55, 9. It says, for just as the heavens are higher than the earth... So my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. See, God knows so much more than we do that when these storms come on that we think we can't survive and then we, we get through them and we're stronger through them and we look back and say, wow, I grew through this. And God's all the time going, I, I knew you would. I, I knew we needed to do this. I knew you would be stronger from this. And I, I think we have to remember that is that God has a plan. And he loves us. And if we need to keep that, that peace very front, foremost in the center, God loves us. And, and don't second guess that. Number two, we need to be still in the midst of uncertainty. I'm not good at this part. I get the whole part. The previous part, I do that pretty good. I'm good at understanding God loves me. This is a part I don't like. Be still in the midst of uncertainty. I want to go and fix it. I want to get up and go solve the problem. And sometimes I just need to trust God. And I think that's for some of us is a hard step. I know many of you that I've met out in Marble Mound are, are real doers. You're, you're up early in the morning and you're out working hard. and You're, you're always doing stuff with your hands. And, and it's hard to sit still. And when things are going wrong in our lives or, or storms are coming against us, I'm one of those people, send me out with sandbags or send me out with a, a bulldozer. Let's, you know, let's, and just sitting and, and, and waiting on someone else to rescue me is a very, very hard step for me. So we need to receive the peace of Christ. And in the scripture, Mark 4.39, 
uh, the New King James Version says, Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And this is a hard thing. It'd be hard for me in the boat to wait for Jesus to do that. I, I want you to understand that there are times we need to wait for God. We need to wait for him. Give us this moment of, of stillness. There's a passage, I don't have a slide for this, but it's Psalm 46.10. says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's a, I say that's a tough one for me. Um, I'm working on it, and I'm better at it than I used to be. Point A of how, how we do this is, number one, we give God control. We give God control. We put control in his hands. We take, we take our hands off the switch. There used to be a song about who's sitting in the driver's seat and who's sitting in the back seat. And it's always hard for us to let Jesus be in the driver's seat and us be in the back seat. Um, and, and this is that whole point of, of giving God control. There's a passage of scripture, Romans 8, 6. It's so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And so we have to choose, am I going to let my old nature run my life or am I going to let the Spirit of God run my life? And, and those, are, those are different railroad tracks. They're headed different places. Um, and B, we need to let God's peace reign in our lives. We need to let God's peace reign. We need to let his peace be an authority over us. The verse that comes to mind is, is Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. And this is the point that I, as I studying these notes, I planned. This is where the mini sermon comes in, because I know a lot of us and a lot of people, and I get calls and text messages, and emails. A lot of people are in great anxiety right now about. Um, what's going on in the economy, and what's going on, and what the governor is doing, and what the president's doing, and what everybody else is doing, and, and we're letting ourselves get, the anxiety is ratcheting up. And I know that Christians kind of wanted to storm the church this very weekend and just meet no matter what and prove the world that we, we could meet. And we're letting this anxiety that the news media and everything is bringing up, and there needs to be this point where we say, I'm not going to be part of that. I'm not going to be part of this anxiety. I'm not going to be all that uptight. My daughter even shared with me this week, I'm just going to quit watching the news. I feel a whole lot better. I think that's not a bad idea. Because, you know, if we rest in God, God is going to take care of us. This is God's church. We are part of God's church. God is going to take care of us. God has a plan for us. He gave his son to die for us. And we don't need to be anxious over how that plan is working out. We need to trust God. And so let's show the world that we trust God and let's, let's let peace of God come over us and let God's peace reign in our lives. Okay, that's my mini sermon. I'm done with that. Finally, third point. And hopefully you won't be mad at me about that, but I, I love you and that's why I wanted to say that is because I can see us get all, all caught up into that. And this kind of goes, goes forward with that. It's number three is be fearless in adversity. Be fearless in adversity. When the enemy starts throwing stuff against you or the world starts throwing stuff against us or our own mistakes start throwing stuff against us, be fearless in that. Know that your God is God. Know that the God that, that saved you is still God. Mark 4, 40, the NIV says, He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why do we let ourselves get so afraid? God has repeatedly in my life shown me how strong and powerful he is. He has rescued me so many times. And yet, when things start going down, I start doubting again. And I, I think we need to start remembering. And I, I once was at a camp and they said, you need to put a journal down and write all the times God has rescued in that journal. And anytime you start feeling like like. God doesn't love you, open up that journal and begin to read all the times God has rescued you. Jesus asked his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? 
It is, it is our fear that causes us to react negatively when we are stuck in a storm. They were afraid because they had not yet identified who Jesus was to them. Jesus, they weren't completely, con no, they didn't know he was the son of God. They knew he was powerful. They knew he had authority. They knew that he was able to heal and cast demons out, but they didn't fully understand that this was the God that created the universe that was sitting in the boat with them. That they had no reason to fear because the God that created the universe was sitting in the boat with them. Mark 4, 41 says, They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus is asking us again today, Why are you so afraid? Why are we so afraid? We have no reason to be afraid. Who's Jesus to you? Is he just a religious figure? If he's just your parents' God, or if he's part of your Sunday routine, or if he's just someone that's going to save you from life and hell, or is he truly your God? Is he truly the God of your entire life? Have you given it all over to him? So here's how you can be fearless. A, go to God. Go to God. Jesus lets us do that. We don't have to go through someone else. We can go directly to God. Psalm 46, 1 through 3, says, God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. God is our refuge and our strength. We can go to him. B, build your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. If you want to build your faith, spend more time reading Scripture. Read the stories in the Old Testament. Read the New Testament. Read the things Jesus did. Read the book of Acts. Read, read all of the accounts of, of the miracles that God did. And... I want you to understand the more you read, the more faith you will have. That's one of the biggest ways you can build your faith is by reading God's word. In reference to the storms, it all comes down to one simple thing, trust. Do you trust him or not? So in conclusion, what I really want to say to you is, is let God lead you during the storm. Take your own hands off, get out of the driver's seat, let God lead you and trust him to get you through it. It's not a simple thing to do. I, I say it like uh, with authority, but at times I struggle to do this very thing. When we go through a hard time, we need to let go, and that expression goes, let go and let God. We need to let go of, of trying to solve it ourselves, and we need to trust God. And so right now, I believe that some of you are, are struggling because of all this that's going on in our country. And... Some of you, it's impacted your life pretty severely. Some of you, not so much, except for cutting off social and, and cutting down some of your freedoms. Let, let me share this with you. God has it all under control. God has it all under control, and we need to trust in him. We need to be the people that walk the streets with peace. We need to be the people, when we post online, that we post from a place of, of peace in God, not a place of anger or a place of being mad at others. But we need to talk and, and share and message from a place of we have peace in God because our God is in control and our God is going to show himself strong. And if you're struggling with that right now, I want to pray with you. I want to pray that you would truly let, let God have every part of your life. I think that many, many people have given their hearts to God and asked them to forgive their sins, but we haven't turned everything over to him yet. And so we let our peace be stolen quite often. So this morning I would challenge you, if you're struggling, give it to God. Just say, God, I am struggling. I am angry. I am frustrated. And I need to put this in your hands. And I'm going to pray with you that God is going to set you free and bring you peace and plant your feet on that solid ground that is him, and that through this storm, you will come out stronger and better.
Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray for each one this morning. I know that some are really struggling. I know that some are really going through a hard time. And I pray, God, that you would just reach down and touch us. And Lord, let us have that faith that only comes from you, that you have all of this under control. This morning, church, if, if you would be raising your hand to say, I, I need Jesus to work in my life right now. I just want you to do that, whether you lift it up or lift it up just kind of silently to the Lord. And, and I want to pray for you that God is, is going to work and forgive you for taking control and give you the ability to give that control back to God. Lord Jesus, those of us that have taken, tried to take control, I, I pray that you would forgive us. Forgive us for trying to manage our life when we should let you manage it. And Lord, take our lives. We give our lives to you. Not just our sins, but we give our whole lives to you. And we trust you with our whole lives. And we say, God, take our lives. Plant us firmly on you. Bring peace to us. Help us trust and take this anxiety away. And Lord, we believe that you're going to do some really awesome things in our lives, in our church's life, in our community's life. God, work powerfully in each of our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, I look forward to seeing you soon. The worship team, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. Um, I hope that we all make it. I will be sending you some messages out about that. Um, and, and to the whole church, I'll actually be sending some messages out to try to get you to contact me. A few of you I've been able to contact. I've tried to call some of you and I just can't seem to get through. So please um, reach back out to me so we can talk and to see how we can help meet your needs. But it's been great being with you today. I pray you're going to have a great week and that God works greatly in your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you and keep his hands on you, keep his eyes on you and keep his peace reigning in your life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.